All right. Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you're joining us from. Uh, thanks for stopping by Performance Analytics Office Hours. Uh, if you're new here, I'm going to take a couple minutes just to run through some of the logistics, and then we'll get into today's topic. Um, and real quick, my name is Tom Pasek. I'm a, a technical product marketing manager here at ServiceNow. So uh, first of all, if you haven't joined us in the past, uh, the way we run these sessions is we do a, a little presentation from our own teams. Our product managers graciously donate their time here to meet with you and show off some of the, the great things that we've built and help answer your questions. Um, you should see a Q&A feature available uh, in the Zoom client here. So feel free to go ahead and drop your questions into there. Uh, we'll get those answered. Um, usually what we try and do here is if you have questions about the presentation, go ahead and, and drop those in as we're going through it. At the end, we'll circle back and answer those. And after we've addressed uh, the things that are specific to today's presentation, um, we'll kind of open it up for just open Q&A. If there's anything at all related to PA, it doesn't have to be about today's topic. Um, we'll give you the opportunity to get those questions answered. Um, Maybe cases where we uh, can't get too deep into the specifics of your own instance, we might ask you to raise an incident on high and we'll follow up with you uh, just to make sure we can get to everybody's questions. I do want to point out that we also record all of these sessions. So there's a, a short bit.ly link here that you can use as a shortcut to get to all the recordings. Uh, there's also a, sc a screenshot here showing on the post where you signed up for today's office hours, you should see a list of all of the upcoming session topics that we have planned, as well as links to the uh, direct uh, recordings of the previous events and any supporting material that we had um, in terms of slides that you might want to use. Uh, so feel free to check those out. Um, it's a great as a reference if you need to go back to something or if you miss a session. And speaking of recordings, uh, I don't have a slide on it, but uh, I also want to point out uh, we did a Orlando launch broadcast event um, and if you were not able to attend that, you can grab the recording off the servicenow.com website. There is a, a keynote that I'll walk through some of the uh, major enhancements kind of platform wide uh, that, that cover everything and all the different apps. And then there's also a now platform spotlight session, which went a little bit deeper into um, some of the topics that I think this group is probably interested in like performance analytics um, and some of our AI capabilities. Um, so you can hear me talking about those on that recording. Uh, another thing I want to highlight, if you haven't seen, um, we released a set of four free emergency response apps last week. So you can also find uh, a link to this on the servicenow.com website. Uh, but there's four individual apps. They're all available via the ServiceNow store, completely free uh, to use, uh, whether you're an existing customer or not. Um, so if you haven't seen those, there's... Uh, short little demos of each of them available if you want to get a feel for um, what they do and how they can help uh, your organization um, manage your response. And last thing I want to call out, um, we did make an announcement that Knowledge 2020 is going into a digital format, which I imagine was unsurprising to many of you. Uh, we're still working on some of the details around what that format looks like. If you uh, are a speaker, and had a, a slot scheduled, you should have received some information uh, in the past 24 hours about what that new format will be and uh, what we're changing to, as well as some uh, additional requirements there. Um, and if you are planning to attend, uh, Knowledge is now a completely free event. It is still going to happen um, starting on May 5th. Uh, so there'll be an initial set of sessions available. Uh, we plan to still have labs, demos, breakout sessions, and quick theater sessions. It'll just be more of a, a digital format where you're accessing that kind of all online. Um, it'll be a mix of on-demand and live content. Uh, so stay tuned for more information on that, uh, but just want to point out that the event is happening. Uh, we're working hard to make sure that's still a, a fantastic event for you. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Adam, who's going to take us through a demo of one of our new Orlando features with uh, personalized widgets. Over to you, Adam. Thanks, Tom. Um, and this week, we're going to skip a presentation on this, and we're going to go straight into a demo. We want to see, we want to show you what you can do now. So I'm going to share my browser. Um, the first thing that I, I want to point out. 
um, has to do with the release notes. So the doc, the doc page has gotten a nice facelift uh, very recently. Uh, hopefully this is more, fun more functionality for you. I allow you to get through just the, the massive amount of information that's out there for the sprawl of, of ServiceNow. So I went into release notes for Orlando um, and I selected the features I wanna see. You can browse everything, but I wanted to see those key uh, new features in Orlando for, uh, for performance analytics, reporting and dashboards. You can choose what you wanna see. So lots of different choices on what you're looking for in the areas that, that you're going for. Um, what we're gonna talk about today is personalized, visual, personalized visuals. So I'm gonna go into uh, the documentation for personalized visuals. And this will walk you through all the details that we're gonna do, but what I, wanna, what I wanna take you through today is a demo of this. Um, if you wanna see step-by-step -step exactly what you need to do, the documentation will walk you through what you're able to do, what you're not able to do. Um, but again, you, you have this already at your fingertips. So let's go into what personalized visuals are and what this, what this capability gets you. So what I'm looking at now is one of our out-of-the-box dashboards. I think this is in um, the complimentary version of performance analytics incident daily, uh, seven day to 28 day. And I come in here, I load the dashboard and I'm seeing all, if we're focusing on this first widget, all the open incidents that are available. So we're seeing anywhere, uh, I'm on the top line, we're seeing from a thousand up to 3000 incidents for open incidents that are coming through. I can come in and use the break, the dashboard breakdown and put in network. I wanna see mine, I'm in the network group, I run the network group. So I click on network and I click apply. And now I'm only seeing that what's available for the network. That's great, but it's not necessarily the best user experience in that I only care about the network. I don't care about anything else that's in here. There's plenty of other groups. They're not my groups. I care about my group. We wanna make sure we're able to focus dashboards on, on driving the user for action. So show them what they need to see. Don't, don't distract them with lots of other information. With personalized dashboards, I'm able to come in and this is the same widget. You'll notice there is no dashboard breakdown. You could add that if you, if you still needed it, but it comes in and it is showing me just what the network, uh, just showing me what's available for the network because that's mine. How this works. So I'm gonna bring in the widget. So I, instead of clicking on the edit, I have the widget open. It's all the same, but we've added a new section into the widget. When I select the breakdown, I get a new tab down here, which is element settings. And the element settings allows me to pick an elements filter, which will dynamically pick the element. So I'm not gonna hard code the element for assignment group. In the past, we could have done this by creating a dashboard for every group and a widget for every group by simply selecting network. I don't know if that pop-up actually shows, but there's a pop-up that lets me type in network from my, all my list of groups. But what we're able to do is now just engage a, a um, engage the elements filters, which, you've, which you might've already been using. Let's talk about what those are more specifically, but I can come in and if I'm gonna browse, it's now gonna give me a list of all the elements filters that are available for this breakdown. So I have my beautiful test. I'm sure we all have a test breakdown uh, or elements filter. One of my groups, groups I've managed. So I'm gonna change this right now from groups I manage and I'm set uh, as the manager of the network. I'm gonna change it to one of my groups never do live demos. Let's see what happens. I'm going to save this and go back here and I'm going to refresh this and this might change. Let's see. I'm not actually sure if I'm in a group, so this might come back with nothing. Yeah. So this one for me, I'm not actually in a group. So it comes back, it comes back with nothing. Uh, so this is something you, you might see for the filters. There's not, it, it, they do have to return something for you. Um, so I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna change this back to groups I manage and save that. And when I come in, let's go ahead, we'll go ahead and drill into this, into this widget. And what you can see is network group assignment group network. And the widget, well, I don't say network, it's running this filter to give me network. And then I, and now I'm working as I normally would. 
Okay, and let's talk about element filters because a key part of this is element elements filters. Elements filters are not new. Uh, they've been around for, for many years, a little under, underutilized. Elements filters are, uh, were able to be applied to lists, uh, list break, or breakdown lists, where you could filter which elements you want to see in the list. Um, and then in the analytics hub, you were able to use them as well. We're reusing those because they work for, for this use case. So in this case, we're going to see groups I manage. I'm going to go in and look at what groups I manage looks like. So I'm going to click on groups I manage. I give it a name, give this a meaningful name for what it, what it is, and it's going to apply to a specific breakdown. So uh, by selecting a breakdown, breakdown of groups, it's going to know what the facts table is. And now I'm putting a condition on the groups table. Whatever this returns, that's what, that's what I'm going to get. So again, I call it groups I manage, and I have a sys user group. If I had a breakdown on assigned to, I could do something similar. If I go in, I'm going to create a new one. And I'm going to do, um, I'm just going to do me. That's the title because I'm going to pick me. I'm going to pick a breakdown source of something on sys user. Well, if, in this case, it came back with group member. And what I can do is user is dynamic me. And now if I applied this elements filter, it would return me. So this would only be good if a breakdown was actually me um, or a specific user. But whatever you have for the breakdown, you can do it. I can hard code lists if I'd like to. Um, often what we're going to see is that we're going to use an is dynamic. The is dynamics, so there's lots of choices that you have in there. Where, where I think you're gonna see some functionality in this, some additional functionality, is where you're gonna create new dynamic filter options. Um, there's more documentation on that. We're not gonna go into it today because I think you're gonna get a lot out of this using the groups I'm in, is me. But you certainly could do something like my department, where de if you had a breakdown on department or my cost center, where the cost center is dynamic mine, if that doesn't exist already in your system, you can develop a scripted filter to do that. Uh, you create a scripted filter and then you register it as a dynamic filter. I believe we're actually gonna talk about that in a couple of weeks. Um, but you can create more of these to get you exactly what you want. So when the user comes in to their dashboard, sorry, they come into their dashboard, they're going to see their content for them. This should also work on a service portal. It's kind of been a, a weak spot for service portals in the past where we weren't able to personalize that ex experience. We didn't have a, a dashboard breakdown on a service portal, so we had to hard code a bunch of widgets. Hopefully this will allow us to cut that down. So I come in on a PA widget on a service portal, it knows who I am, and then it's gonna only show me that information. Again, when I click on it, I'm still getting into the normal analytics hub and the results are there, but that first initial view of the dashboard is now gonna be personalized. The trade-off for this is, this is not great for a process owner, uh, this is great for a manager, but not a process owner because I can't change. Once it's personalized, it's personalized. This is the same as putting in a, a is me on a report compared to using interactive filters. So you have use cases for both, but we wanted to make sure that you have, the, you have both use cases, right? One is personalized, just show me what I need to see. The other is I'm browsing for, for other, other cases. So that's when I'd still use the existing paradigm. Um, if I'm a process owner, this is what I want to see. Show me everything and let me drill in. But if I'm a manager, just show me what I want to see, right? Show me my incidents, uh, incidents for my group that are open right now, and then show me this trend. All right, that's actually the end of the demo. That's, that's all there is to it. It's really simple to set up. You just need to make sure you're using your elements filters, and then you want to set up, um, and then you can apply it to your widgets. Sorry, I did want to point out one other thing too. This was new in New York. They show multiple elements up. Um, as this, this can come into play in here if you do return more than one, um, if it does return more than one element, which is when I'm on a dashboard, if we go back to the main dashboard and I select multiple elements. So I'm gonna select uh, network because I know there's data in there and I'm gonna try database and see what comes in there. The default here is that it's gonna split. It's gonna split the uh, database group and the network as two different columns, that's fine. 
but you also have the ability that that comes from uh, separate. If I change this to aggregate, it's going to combine them. So we'll do that really quickly as well. This is separate. I'm now going to aggregate. And per widget, you have the ability to, to be dynamic, but then you can also decide, do I want to show separate lines? Or when I select two elements, I want to see the total for those two things. So if I'm a manager managing two groups, but they're still, but they're working together, I might want to see them combined, which is what I'm doing now. But I also might want to see them separate, which is what I see, saw before. That is a per widget setting, just like the personalization. All right. I want to open it up to any questions about this. Um, let's see, open up the Q and A. All right. Well, I don't see any questions about it. Hopefully, that makes sense because this is all pretty uh, standard components that we had. Hopefully, this makes sense. Um, the big thing that you do want to watch out for is in the UI. Um, make sure you look for the element settings that are coming down here. Um, not in the element here. Um, but once you get that, um, you, you should be all set. Uh, and there is plenty of um, there's plenty of documentation out there and some blogs about dynamic filter options. Uh, if you're going to write those on your own, and again, we'll talk about those in a couple of weeks to go into them where we'll use them in both or in all of performance analytics, in elements filters, in uh, you can use them for reference qualifiers, and and we use them in reports quite a bit. Um, and a question did come in, if I manage a team, can I set it up for all in my team um, separately? If, are you talking about the, the widget level that, that what we just said in the display or in the dynamic filters for the personalized visual, visualizations? Ah, yeah, sorry, and, and I'll point out, this is, in, this is new in Orlando. Um, you do have to be on Orlando to get this. This will not be backported. It's new functionality in Orlando. Um, so if you want to, if your instance isn't in Orlando yet, uh, or isn't on Orlando, you can get a developer instance and look at it, uh, try it out. And when you do upgrade, it's something you can look at. It's all opt-in, um, so you don't have to do anything, but this is just now a new tool that you have available to use. And this is, uh, and it is configuring a widget. So if you could configure a dashboard before, then you could, then this is available on all the, on all the widgets. Um, there's, you, I, you don't have to turn anything else on. You don't have to do anything. It's just a new option that you can choose. Just like I could hard code in network in my element. I have the ability instead to choose the elements I manage. Um, and the biggest, I, I think this is great because it has been something, it's been an, an issue with personalized that dashboard in the first place. How do I show them something? Um, really for service portals, it's been a limitation with service portals that had to be very uh, high level. So I think if you are using a service portal that you already have some reports on, you now can introduce some more performance analytics in a much more powerful targeted way, particularly if you're looking for assignment groups. Um, if you're using a service portal to help first level managers, uh, breaking down my assignment group, we're real, I think we're going to see a lot of use in there. Um, but there's no limit to what you do, right? I'm, I'm probably not going to do a dynamic or an elements filter for priority breakdowns, but certainly cost centers, departments, users, all of that you can drive to really disseminate the performance analytics part further down uh, in the organization. Whereas I don't have to keep it for my, uh, for my process owners, for my executives. You can show the frontline workers their trends, right? Their SLA attainment over time. All right. Oh, sorry, I got a couple questions in. Um, so there is a question uh, when I went back to the multiple elements select as uh, in the breakdown uh, that has to do, is that available in New York? That is available in New York. Um, so at, once you're on New York, you will see that the drop down for dashboard breakdowns changed. So instead of just being a normal drop down, you get this UI where you can select multiple. Uh, that happens automatically. It just moves to no multiple and you go to apply. Um, nice feature. Uh, I think we defaulted most, uh, most of the widgets so that everything still works, but you may want to tune it again to understand, do I want aggregate or do I want separate? Um, that's very much on uh, widget by widget use case, you know, what, what makes sense for you. And that you have in New York, the personalized widgets come in uh, in Orlando.
for uh, the question came in about for the breakdown, I believe uh, there's an hourly breakdown, but it's not select, uh, but it's not selectable for this. Um, hourly breakdown is, I believe it ships out of the box. I don't know if it's actually on anything out of the box. It is. Um, Robert, when you say it's not selectable, are you talking about in the dashboard breakdown or in the personalized widgets? Well, well oh, uh, any of um, so the, the hourly breakdown is a manual breakdown, which causes some headaches because some of the things you need a reference for. Um, I would think it would work here. It's still manual. I don't know why it wouldn't work. Um, uh, if you, if it's not showing up for you, if you can put a question in the community with some screenshots, we can, we can take a look. I'll take a look and I'm sure some others will take a look as to what's going on. Um, there are restrictions because, because it's not a reference, but I think it should work because at the end of the day, it's all the same. The biggest issue you'll have with the hourly breakdown is that it won't apply to reports that you can't make that an interactive filter, but it should work for all the PA widgets. Is it possible to create a widget that shows how am I doing versus rest, the rest of the team? Um, I haven't done that. Um, I, we can take a look right now because the way you would need to do that is with a separate widget. So if I came in and added a widget indicator in this case, by the way, that's a horrible idea to do demos like this live because I've never tried this. Um, I'm gonna clear out the element. Am I gonna clear out the element? Okay. I'm gonna save this, clear out my element. Um, Notice that when I did clear out the breakdown, my element settings went away and it's read only. Uh, if you can't select anything, it's because you haven't put a breakdown in. So I'm gonna put assignment group back in here. That unlocked my elements filter. And so I'm gonna do groups I manage and save that. And now I'm gonna come into widget indicators. So I'm gonna add a second uh, indi uh, widget to it. And this was I think it was number of new or number of open. Hope I got that right. I'm going to not have a breakdown. So I don't think that'll make sense here. Um, we'll go ahead and follow. I'm gonna save that. And now if I come in here, let's see what we get. Yep, so this is now showing me um, with my hundreds, hundreds of open incidents compared to the widget indicator, which is the, the top line, right? That's showing me everybody I want to see. So um, when you come in, you can configure the, the multiple widget, the supporting widget indicators. Go back. So I have my normal time series, and then I have a widget indicator laid on, laid on top of that. So a single score, this wouldn't work, but this would work. Uh, any place else you can combine it. They're configured independently and they'll listen appropriately. All right, uh, another question came in. Um, how do we see, his how can we see historical changes of the ticket? For example, assignment group changes for the incident. Um, uh, for that example, um, if you're, it's, that's not gonna be performance analytics generally, but it's, you're gonna see that one assignment groups, assignment group changes. Um, if you're looking for a specific record, the best case is to go in and view the history. So I can view the, um, the calendar view of any changes. If you're trying to audit, because I under want to understand what's going on, this is the best place to go. The place for assignment group is generally going to be on your, um, on your metrics. So if I'm in incident, I'm gonna open up an incident and we'll see what shows up. All right, so I'm on an incident here. I can come in, 
um, I'm going to view the metrics timeline. This one doesn't have any data, but this would actually show me each assignment group and how long they had that. Um, this all comes from the from metrics, from metric definitions. So uh, assignment group should ship out a box. So assignment group. So by default, we ship uh, a field duration, uh, a field value duration metric on incident. This is this can be configured on any extension of task. So incident problem change project case anything has metrics. It can have metrics if they don't ship out of box. You can easily configure them. And what I say here is I'm going to call this assignment group, but on the incident table, track every time assignment group changes. And what you get from that is, let's see, let me see if I have one that has some exciting. Yeah, this one does. I'm going to go to this incident. Um, what this shows me is that this was uh, assigned to the network team for 11 days assigned to the software team for 29 seconds and assigned to the network team again for 13 minutes. So if I come in, oh, uh, yeah, let's, I'm gonna go to that incident. And if I go to the metric timeline, I'll now see the users that it went through because we have assigned to as a metric. And if I see the incident duration for the state, uh, I can see what states it was in when it was on there. So it went to new and on hold back and forth quite a bit until it went to closed. Um, on the metric I was just on, if I go back to the assignment group, it's not checked to show on metric timeline. I'm gonna check timeline. And now when I go to the incident, that will show up on the timeline. And so I have assignment group where it was assigned, right? So software for 13 seconds, it was network and then a software for 13 seconds, then back to network. Um, and then it went to change management quite a few days later. All stored in inc uh, incident management, uh, sorry, in, in metric instance. Um, and you can report on that. You can layer PA on that. There's a couple labs from uh, on that. Um, I don't know if uh, David or Thomas, you know which lab it was. Um, if you go into the K19 on-demand library, you, you can find a lab that covers metrics. I think it was PA203. I think PA203 goes into uh, some lab exercises on how you layer PA on top of metrics. Um, super uh, great lab. Um, that will, with knowledge, there'll be something like that that will make that more publicly available. But I believe everybody at this point can go into the K20 um, on demand library and find the K19 labs. But that walks through this a lot more. Um, generally, if I were doing reporting on the historical stuff, this is what I want to go to. If it's more than that, it can be a little bit more uh, more in detail. Um, can you? So, question having to come with the assignment group. Can I see the? Um, uh, uh, David, thank you for adding in the lab from K19. So, if you want to know more about metrics, go do that lab. It's when you metrics do something performance analytics doesn't do that complement it complements performance analytics, and when you layer. PA on top of metrics, it's amazingly powerful what you can see about your process. Um, can you see who, who made the assignment group change in metrics? No, you cannot, um, not out of the box. If you're trying to see who did something and you wanna blame them, you need to go look at SysAudit. Um, we don't wanna report on SysAudit. SysAudit is blocked by default for reporting for performance issues, uh, potential performance issues. Um, so then you wanna to go to SysAudit. That, uh, that question has come up. I mean, there, I, I would put it, I would go look in the idea portal, which we have here, that's why I brought this up. Um, if, if for something like, I really wanna see who made the change for to a metric, go to the idea portal and put that change in, uh, put that idea in, see if somebody else has put that in. Um, take a look and I don't know if metrics is actually in here. Uh, it's not, you can put it in performance analytics or in reporting. Um, say, I want to see who did this because I need to see who's, who, is, who are making these changes. I know with that often comes uh, what was the change made from. Um, what, it changed, what it was and what it became and who did it and when, that's all in SysAudit. Um, but uh, metrics, you're just getting how long it's there. So metrics are much better for process oriented. Does my process have a problem? Um, but if you have a specific audit issue, then you want to go to SysAudit. So you wouldn't want to extend uh, uh, the metrics table uh, where where you basically store that value and why not 
Um, if you were, in, if you wanted to do that, I'd recreate metrics. Um, I would copy the business rule. The yes, yeah, I've, exactly. I, 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 I've done that before. Yeah, I mean, it's an asynchronous business rule going to a table. It's not super complicated, but be very careful about modifying the out of the box stuff because it's used by a lot of things. Um, and if you customize it, you customize it, which just increases issues with support. Um, but I think that's know, generally a good guideline, right? Don't don't mess too much with the existing uh, configuration. Just create a copy of, of an existing one and modify that. Yeah, um, that that's what I do. There's certainly the the discussion that you should just modify out of the box. It's one of the recommendations because then you'll see it in the skips. But you need to have a really good handle on upgrades if you're doing that and understanding your upgrades. You're going to have to manually merge the code if we add new functionality to metrics you're going to have to handle it. If you copy it, then you'll, you'll just have to be aware of what's coming on. So um, the code for metrics is all in your instance. It's a business rule fired by task. There's a script include or two and a couple business rule uh, uh, script actions, but you certainly could recreate it. And it is just the table, a table and, a, and an asynchronous business rule. Okay. Um, and, and just to be clear, everybody in your chat, you should have the link to that lab. We'll put that in the, in the knowledge or in the uh, recapping community, but you should have access to that now. Uh, and a question about something else. Okay. Okay. Question came up about viewing the scores uh, for a formula. And I believe it's viewing the, the, formula itself, the, fill, the, the, the viewing the formula in Analytics Hub to view the calculations. You can view um, the scores for a formula, but you can't actually view the calculation. You can view the formula, you can view the scores, you can't view the step-by-step -step calculation anymore. Um, that was removed in a few releases ago because it was, it was just wrong in some cases on, on how it actually works. Um, we don't have that through now. Um, there's not a way to do it. It is something that we're working on. Um, if you want to voice some support for that to see it in there, I'd recommend putting that in the idea portal um, to, to voice that, yes, we use this. Um, but uh, today there's not a way to do it because it was incorrect in some cases. And one of the things we're seeing with the new, with the new formula, um, formula API, that our formulas are getting a little more complicated and just the UI for that didn't, did not translate well. It worked fine for A plus B or um, C divided by D, but uh, it, it, we're working on how do we expose that and how do you, how do you really drill through those? So I would expect to see some improvements um, in future releases, but uh, at this point that, that functionality does not exist. And the, the link in the chat, um, uh, the, the link in the chat, should give you access to that lab. And again, we'll post it in the community and the recap. So if you go to the page where you register this, you'll see the recap for this. Once the recording's available uh, later this week, we'll have that link there. Um, and a question came up to that about uh, knowledge, uh, knowledge 20 being free. Tom, you wanna confirm what the, uh, the price is for Knowledge 20? Yep, I can confirm the price is absolutely $0. Just for you and your friends. Tell them yeah. Tom sent you. Um, it's going to be free. The, lab, the labs are going to be free. But I believe all the K-19 labs are already free. Um, if you go back, uh, the labs, if you do an old lab, the labs are expecting to have a very specific data set to start out with and a very specific uh, uh, configuration. Um, they were all done in Madrid last year, I believe. Um, I believe that's what our labs were on. Um, so the instance will look a little different. Uh, you won't have the data, but you can go through and you can read the lab and kind of, you should be able to get a lot out of it, uh, the step-by-step -step stuff. Um, this year for, for the performance analytics and reporting labs, we're trying to make it that you could do the lab on your own and give you the data set to load. Um, if you have a developer and since we're, we're working that out, uh, but there will be labs at Knowledge. Um, there'll be a, a, a lot of labs at Knowledge and we'll continue to have more content out there. Uh, but at this point, you should have access to the 19 stuff, the 20 stuff, when that becomes available will be free as well. So there won't, even if you don't, even if you weren't planning to go, it'll still be free for you. Um, so we're trying to get a lot more content out there to walk you through a lot of these step-by-step. -step. 
Um, as we're talking about walking through step by step, um, I, did, I wanted to make to add on to what Tom showed uh, at the beginning about the COVID uh, the COVID nineteen forum. Um, I posted a blog in there um, when when that came live about loading COVID nineteen infection data into your instance. Uh, for some of you on the call, this might be uh, interesting to see. Uh, it also walks through how you can use a remote table. Uh, we walked through a couple different options on how you can get that data in your instance. I know for a lot of us, we're getting asked to do that, right? Like we got to manage our business and, and infection data mat matters, matters for all of us. I'm sure we're all sitting at home right now uh, calling in, um, but there's a blog in the COVID-19 uh, forum about how, do you, uh, how you can load the data into your instance, depending on what you, uh, what you actually need to have it do. Um, and we put it a, a put a few blogs in the last couple of weeks, following in on office hours from a couple of weeks ago, about uh, uh, step by step how do you do a couple of different things? How do I get rid of, um, or how do I some trouble reporting issues, complicated reportings? We talked about that. We walked through three different use cases about how you can uh, do it. It's it's, it's basically an abbreviated lab, um, so we have screenshots and steps to walk you through what you need to do. I'd recommend taking a look at those. Expect to see a lot more of that stuff. Um, we, we certainly want to give you more hands-on experience, not just, not just tell you what you can do, but show you how you can do it. All right. I don't see any more questions in the queue right now. So if anybody has anything else they'd like to ask um, about anything PA, uh, PA reporting related, we can answer those. Otherwise, we can wrap up. I, I do want to uh, make a plug as I keep doing. Uh, make sure don't you know don't wait for two weeks or now um, in two weeks I believe we're talking about some of the new logging improvements in Orlando as well as uh, looking at diagnostics and making sure you're using those and are familiar with diagnostics uh, on how to just keep your system running smoothly and, and how do you solve problems before your users notice them uh, but that uh, so we'll see we'll see those the community is there if you have an issue just post some screenshots, post the question to the community. I've seen a lot of uptick in volume recently, which is great. And so many, uh, so many questions being answered by partners and customers. Um, it looks like everything, almost everything's getting answered now with pretty good uh, uh, responses. So if you have a question, don't be afraid to post it there. Make sure you hit the old, if you missed an office hours, go look at the recordings. We have the recaps, which will give you the deck, although there is no real deck this week. Um, go look at the deck, go watch the recording. Go look at some of those new blogs that are being posted. Lots of great content out there. And as we've talked about for a few of the features uh, today, if it's not doing what you think it should do, what you'd like it to do, um, and it's not broken, put an idea on the portal. The idea portal is a place for, for you as customers and partners to say, I'd like it to do this. And when we see something that we're looking at now, when we see something that has lots of, of votes in it, I'm going to be scary put in performance analytics. Um, when you, we see something that's got a lot of votes, this is what we look at as, as product managers on how do we make this better. So, uh, you know, please use that if we have some more time you need. And you, if you have a few minutes and you're not, uh, you need a distraction, come in and do this. Help us make the product do what you want it to do. That's what the purpose of the idea portal is. Um, and as we talked about the on-demand library, it's under Knowledge 2020, but this has all the old knowledge information as well. I, th I know we have 18 and 19 posted. So I'm going to go into 202, or sorry, I think 203. I'm able to see the Knowledge Lab from uh, Performance Analytics 203. I get the lab um, and, and the presentation to walk through it. So lots of content out there to help you. Please leverage it. And if we don't have any more questions, we can wrap up. And we'll see you again in two weeks. Tom, you want to um, have anything else to add? No, I think you, you stole my thunder on that last line. Sorry. Um, no, that's, that's great. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. We'll get this recording posted and we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Take care.